Hi, this is Sabrina, and today I'm going to show you how to use Photoshop to experiment with print placement in your garments. We'll start with looking at this photo of a Pendleton wool blanket that I picked up from a thrift store for about 10 bucks the other day. It's got this glorious large scale repeat in the pattern. And uh, what we need to do is look for the repeating motif in the pattern. For this particular print, the repeating motif is this square here in the middle. And that basically repeats throughout the entire wool blanket. And we need to select that print. So first we want to start by making sure that we have the rulers enabled. Uh, if you don't have that, you can go up to View and then select Rulers. Um, and that will show you the rulers on the vertical and horizontal edges of your screen. Then drag the ruler across uh, to one edge of your motif, drag the vertical ruler to the other edge of the motif, and repeat with your horizontal ruler. Um, I like to pick one edge of my motif, like the edge of the squares, for example, and the stripes, um, just to make sure that I'm really going from one edge of the motif all the way through to the other without skipping part of it. So now we want to use our rectangular marquee tool to select um, the area in between our guidelines. Then we're going to go to Edit, Define Pattern from Selection, and give your selected area um, a name. That will now make sure that Photoshop treats that repeating motif as uh, the square to use to make a repeating pattern of when you start importing the pattern into your line drawing. Next, let's go to our line drawing. Here, I've got the line drawing for the Oslo co coat, which I pulled off, um, I think, the Tasudi website. Um, you want to take a look at your drawing and think about which parts of the garment you really want to experiment um, with putting prints on. For this particular coat, I wanted to experiment primarily with the front bodice, uh, both sides of the front bodice, and also maybe uh, a little bit of the sleeve on either side as well. I don't really need to experiment with print placement on the collar because the collar is um, attached to the front bodice anyway, so I'm not going to be able to control the placement of the print in that area separately. So I'm going to leave that out. So the first thing you need to do is fill in and break out each of the different components of the garment that you want to experiment with. First we need to add a new layer um, that we can paint on. Uh, but before we do that, we need to go back to our original line drawing and just lock it uh, to make sure that we don't accidentally make any changes to it along the way. Going back to our new layer, going to click on that, and then we're going to go over to the paintbrush tool and uh, just make sure that you have a nice bright color selected. Doesn't matter what color, um, this color will not show up in the final product. Now go around the edges of uh, the pattern piece, or sorry, the, the part of the garment that you want to experiment on. And you really don't need to be precise here. Um, just, you know, as you can see, my line is a little bit wiggly. Just roughly try to follow as best you can the, uh, the edge of the piece that you want to experiment with. Um, I am actually just using the trackpad on my laptop, so uh, we don't need any fancy tools here. It'll probably be slightly easier if you use a mouse. Um, but just again, roughly go around the edges um, of your piece like so. And now that I've got the edges outlined, um, I usually just go to my fill tool and fill in the rest of the empty space. I'm also going to go back to my paintbrush tool, zoom in a little bit, and just try to fill in uh, this little corner here that we didn't quite get to the first time around. All right, so that is um, our first piece done. And now we just want to repeat the process um, for the sleeve. 
So again, exact same process, create a new layer, um, change the color to something that will give you a nice contrast um, against that first color so you can kind of see where you're going. Um, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit, oops, <laughs> zoomed in a little too much, um, just to make things easier for myself. Going back to the paintbrush tool and then painting around the edge of the piece. Again, uh, you know, try to follow the edge if you can, but you don't really need to be particularly worried about this. Um, this is just a rough um, illustration for purposes of getting a sense of what our final garment is going to look like. You know, we're not trying to render a photo illustration um, or something like that for something professional. Um, so it's okay if you're not following the edge exactly. All right, so going again to my fill tool, I'm just gonna fill in the middle um, white area there. Now we've got that sleeve done and we just repeat the process um, for the other two parts of the garment. So I've gone ahead and done that. Um, and, you know, just filled them in, created layers for them. You can see all the layers down the right hand side. Um, and I would recommend that uh, you just go ahead and rename those layers. Um, it can be a little hard to keep track of which is which. So um, I'm going to rename this one the uh, left front. Um, the pink one here is going to be the left sleeve. And then um, up here, I'm going to rename this one the right sleeve um, and uh, uh, rename this layer here the, oh, oops. Uh, so this should be the right sleeve and the one on the bottom should be the right front. There we go. So we've got everything renamed and, and now we get to the fun part, which is actually um, importing in the patterns that we want to experiment with. So our first step is um, going to the left front. Um, that's going to be the first uh, piece we work on. Um, what you want to do is go to your rectangular marquee tool and select an area that is much bigger than the area that you actually want to fill in with your pattern. Um, we will see a little bit later um, why it is that we want to do that. So there we selected a very large rectangle as you can see. Then you go up to your black and white cookie and come down to pattern and you'll see there's the pattern that we selected in the first step of this process. And um, we're going to reduce the scale. Um, I'm going to start with 25%. So now you've got your pattern filled in, but it just shows all over the place and you don't want that. So we're going to go over and click on that layer that we just added with the pattern, right click and go down to create clipping mask. And that will get rid of um, all of the pattern in the, in the rest of the, in the picture. So you're probably asking, how do I know what scale to apply um, to my pattern? Um, this is really something you just need to experiment with. Um, but here in this particular garment, what I did was um, I measured uh, the length from that break point all the way down to the edge of the hem. Um, and then I measured the size of the pattern repeat um, on my actual fabric and just sort of played around with the scale until um, I got to something that looked right. Uh, if you need to adjust the scale, uh, you can just go over and double click on that pattern icon um, and you can keep adjusting the scale um, however you want. So now that we have our pattern in, we can go to the move tool and just start playing around with where exactly um, you know, the print appears on this part of the garment. So now let's repeat the process for the left sleeve. Again, we want to go to the left sleeve layer and go to our rectangular marquee tool and draw a rectangle that is much bigger than the area that you actually want to fill with print, like so. Go to your black and white cookie, down to pattern, reduce your scale to, in this case, 25%. 
and create your clipping mask by right clicking and going down to create clipping mask like so. Now you've got that left sleeve filled in with your pattern as well and again you can start moving that around and just playing with um, the pattern placement there. Now you're probably wondering why we kept drawing rectangles that are much bigger than the area we actually want to fill and that's because we want to give ourselves as much kind of leeway as possible to play with the print. Um, you know you can see here if I start dragging all the way to the edge of my rectangle um, it doesn't cover uh, the sleeve anymore. We just see that hot pink that I already previously painted in the sleeve with. Um, we don't want that. We want to be able to have the full range of the print um, at our disposal when we start playing around with the print placement. Okay, so that's the left side of our garment done. We just need to repeat the process with the um, right front and right sleeves, uh, which I'm just gonna go ahead and do like that. Um, now you can see the print is filled in um, in every piece of the garment. Um, and now comes the fun part. We can start playing around um, and moving around with the print placement in our entire garment. All you have to do is make sure you've selected your move tool and click on the piece and just start um, moving them around uh, to see what pleases the eye basically. Um, so on this front piece, you know, I could try maybe putting that uh, big orange stripe down the side like that. Um, you know, I would do maybe the same thing on the other side because usually, you know, we cut our coats so that they're symmetrical. Maybe I want to align that center motif um, like that. And then start playing around with the sleeve placement. Um, now again, just click on the piece, start moving that around. Now I'm going to try sticking the, you know, maybe the blue and white area um, down the side of the sleeve like so, and the other side actually already has that placement. So as you can see, using this method in Photoshop, you can really play around and experiment with you know, different ways of cutting and placing the print um, in your garments. Um, you know, I tried these three particular looks in this coat and uh, we'll see what I end up making. Hope this was helpful and um, happy sewing everyone.